Imagine getting back a third of your time every single year. Imagine never working more than four hours every single day. Imagine scaling your business with fun, ease, and never risking burnout. Well, this is very much possible once you eliminate procrastination from your life forever. Turns out that recent research says that 90% of entrepreneurs are wasting about three hours every single day in procrastination. And what's worse, three out of four believe that procrastination is a character trait that cannot be changed. But let me tell you, after training more than 300 entrepreneurs over the past seven years in peak performance, I warranty that you can eliminate procrastination from your life. This video is about my specific protocol that we always use to help our clients remove procrastination from their life. And this is one of the things that they value the most and I warranty that it will work for you. We have prepared a template for you to implement some of these strategies that you can download below. The procrastination is a problem that affects everyone. I've seen people procrastinate on starting their business and I've seen clients of mine procrastinate on signing the papers of a nine-figure exit. If that tells you something. Procrastination is ever present at all levels. And once you learn how to remove it, it disappears from your life. Welcome back. My name is Ongafi, your founder of Submaster.com, which is the leading performance institute for entrepreneurs and founders. We help you scale quickly without any procrastination, overwhelm, and burnout. So today's video is about procrastination and how to really understand the problem of procrastination so you can remove it totally from your life. But it all hinges on understanding that procrastination is not a time management problem. Procrastination is a mental management problem. It has a core, deep neuropsychological underpinnings that we're going to be discussing to give you the tools, the mental models you need to remove it, right? So first of all, procrastination is a conflict between two sides of the mind. On one side, you have the conscious mind, and then you have the subconscious. This is the psychological way of discussing two areas of the brain, which is the prefrontal cortex, and then we have the limbic system. And as we've discussed on the channel many times, every performance problem is at the root a mental management problem because it implies there's a conflict in between these two sides of the mind. Specifically, what happens when you're procrastinating is that your limbic system is overpowering your prefrontal cortex. In other words, willpower is less powerful than the emotional resistance that come from the task. And what this creates is a conflict that does not get resolved the right way. Because the right way will be just doing the task we committed on doing because we believe it is, it is meaningful for our business or whatever. We have decided that this is important. But we emotionally feel like we're not ready, like we're not good enough, we fear the result of the action, and that emotion and limbic system hijacks the prefrontal cortex. In other words, we're emotionally incapable of dealing with the real or imaginary consequences of this uh, action. And there's a study in the University of Ruhr in 2018 that in this, they, they were mapping out the brains of chronic procrastinators and they realized it all boiled down to emotional management failure. So in essence, they couldn't handle themselves when doing the task they didn't want to do. So it's not a time management problem. It's not a whale problem. It's an emotional management problem. And, it, and we have to solve it at the level of the emotion. And what's even more interesting is that, and this is very, very interesting to me, is that in the 1970s, there was about 5% of chronic procrastinators. So people that could not manage the limbic system effectively to get things done. These days, 
in the 2020s, it's about 30%. So 30% of people have real hard time doing the things they know they need to do because their subconscious inclinations are mismatched from what they consciously know they need to do. So solving this is way more important for growing your business, for building the family you want, from living the life you really want, than anything you uh, consciously decide on trying. No marketing strategy is going to work if you procrastinate on it, right? When there's this cycle that always happens in procrastination, and as I said, it happens at all levels. It happens to every single one that is not trained in performance. When the procrastination cycle it goes a little bit like this. So first, you have the task. Then the brain assesses the emotional impact. And this happens subconsciously. You don't decide on assessing the emotional impact. It's something that just typically happens. And what that leads to is paralysis. Paralysis of action. You do not procrastinate. You procrastinate and you don't do it. Which leads to procrastination on the task. So you abandon you give a task, you assess emotional impact, you have prices of action because you are subconsciously afraid of actually doing the task, so eventually you procrastinate. So you relieve stress, stress, emotional stress is relieved momentarily because you do not engage in the task, but the task is always there. So over time, you build a long-term stress. And every time you have procrastinated on something you absolutely know you needed to do, you know what I'm saying is, is, is true. Because how did it feel once you decided to overcome that resistance and actually do the task and finalize it, right? But typically, it wasn't that hard. It probably was a very simple proposition. So this is what happens at all levels, and this is how we need to think about the solution to this problem. And the solution, as you might imagine, deals with the emotional impact of the task. The solution to procrastination is the how making sure the subconscious accepts the task and allows us to actually do it. So it's not about trying harder. No, it's about removing friction. Literally, this is the whole game is how can we make it emotionally easier for us to actually do the task? How do we achieve it? Glad you asked, because this is exactly what I'm gonna be showing you how to do. Let's find what are the causes of emotional hijack first. What are the things that typically prevent you from, um, from you executing uh, consistently? The first of all, the first is lack of clarity. If you don't know what you need to do, you don't, you cannot do it, but also this creates a lot of uncertainty and our brain does not like uncertainty. We have evolved to seek certainty in everything that we do in order to be uh, cognitively capable of dealing with it. So a lack of clarity is the, I would say one of the number one triggers of highly charged emotional states. Then two is fear. It can be fear of failure, it can be fear of success, uh, it can be fear of ridicule, what others think of me. You know, we have several fears that typically affect uh, entrepreneurs. So a lack of clarity and fear are typically the two most important triggers of highly activated negative emotional states. So how do we solve procrastination? By reversing the equation. If we want to have more clarity on what to do, we break it down step by step so that we know exactly what we need to do. The specific set of actions that we actually need to undertake in order to achieve 
something. So let's say that you want to migrate to another CRM. You want to build a new CRM for the business and you're the better provider, but that is like a long work. It's a lot of work, it's complex, you don't want to do it, you may mess things up. It's all sorts of crazy emotions going through your head. I mean, this is what happened to me last time I did it. So how do you solve it? How do you, uh, how do you actually remain uh, functional? Well, you break down in a step one, a step two, a step three, a step four, with very absolute clarity on what needs to be done, and you make a step one as simple as possible. This is very important because this creates inertia. This may, makes you more prone on going through the list of tasks. Once you've started, you're typically push, uh, typically more willing to keep working. So this is inertia that comes from having started. That is the strategy number one, is get clarity. Make it as simple as possible to actually do the Task. The second strategy is to remove the negative association for the task. In other words, is to reframe the fear that you're feeling as something positive. And there's a strategy called MCIA, which is mental contrasting with implementation intentions. So what this is, is in essence visualizing what is the end result of the thing that you are trying to do. Visualizing success. In the example of the CRM is visualizing a fully functioning CRM that minimizes mistakes, that maximizes lead generation, that helps you make more money. Once you visualize success, then you visualize every step that needs to happen step by step. And the things that you're afraid of, of those steps, like for instance, messing up, I'm making this up, messing up client lists, or you know, choosing the wrong provider, or whatever, you create a specific strategies to dealing with every single fear, right? So choosing the right provider, you do your research for Messing up uh, your client list, you understand that there's a concept of backups. So you're not missing out on anything. And what this does is that it creates a emotionally safe pathway in your mind in which you can conscientiously believe that there's no danger associated with the task. This is very important because if you believe there's some danger at a subconscious level, if you, there's a fear that is not attended, well, what, that, what this does is keeping you stuck in your tracks. So first you get clarity to understand exactly how to remove uncertainty and then you do a little bit of visualization, this MCII concept that helps you troubleshoot potential problems before they even happen so you can move forward more uh, effectively. Also, there's a third thing that is huge, right? Huge, 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 which is avoiding procrastination. So I see this a lot. Procrastination is a fancy word for busyness. When you dream to do a huge task, like, for instance, getting on a CRM, the brain will give you easier to digest alternatives that are not doing the right thing. Like for instance, replying to emails, to emails, like for instance, I don't know, uh, you know, writing tweets or whatever low, in, low engagement, low investment marketing strategy you're following, whatever it is, you will be tempted. Your brain will naturally gravitate towards the easy tasks that add no value but keep you busy to avoid the fear and frustration that comes from not knowing how to deal with the task. So the solution here is to have a procrastination list, a set of activities that you know you tend to do when you don't want to do the hard things they typically have to do with communication and low investment 
uh, marketing strategies. And then the final thing that I believe is very important and really is the ninja stuff. This is really ninja, so pay attention. Is master your arousal. What does that mean? It means that there's a Goldilocks area in which you're not too stressed. Um, arousal skill. So if you're working on things that are way above your skill level, you're going to be burned out because you won't know how to actually do it. On the opposite side, if you have a lot of skill on doing a task that is very easy, you're going to be bored or procrastinate out of boredom. And the solution is to stay in what Mihaly Tsitsin Mihaly discussed as the flow channel or the area of optimal performance in which your skill level and, and the difficulty of the task is just right. In which you know that here is when you are actually able to perform a job peak. And this is typically 4% of your skill level, right? So if you are doing a task that is just above your current level of your abilities and you do it in a conscientious manner, you are typically going to tap into a flow state. You're going to be naturally better inclined towards doing the task. This is very important. If you're procrastinating on something that is too hard, what do you do? You break it down into the necessary pieces to make it easier to digest. If you are procrastinating on something that is just too easy for you, what do you do? You increase the difficulty. You try to do more per work session in order to put yourself in the right arousal. This is the channel you want to be a part of. This is what magic typically happens. This is so important. So this is the four strategies to remove procrastination at a tactical level. Tactical level meaning when you are working the very same moment that you start procrastinating. So a lack of clarity, you break it down into the necessary steps one by one, and then you make the first step as simple as possible. Then the second one is you use MCIA, mental contrasting for implementation uh, intentions to remove the fear that may be subconsciously preventing you from doing the task. This is a cognitive reframing strategy. You change the meaning associated with every single tiny little behavior that you need to deploy in order to achieve the task. Then you avoid procrastination. So you do not check your email, watch YouTube, or do all sorts of bullshit stuff that you know is not helping you move forward. Instead, what you do is that you recommit to the task. And finally, you master your arousal. You do not try to bite more than you can chew, but at the same time, you do not bore yourself to death by doing things that are just too easy. You learn to stay here in the channel of optimal arousal that, as Mihaly said, Mihaly said is where the magic of flow states actually happen. So that is tactical advice, something you can do today, something that will work right now, something that you don't need to uh, do any long-term strategy in order to not go through the procrastination cycle. Now, this will work tactically, but in order to eliminate it completely from your life, so that you don't even know what procrastination is, right, because you forgot about it, we have to train holistically. And this is the final point of the video. The more you off your performance across every pillar that affects it, the less procrastination you will have. So the four pillars to master here are spiritual performance, which is the act of finding meaning in what you do, right? When you are working on something you intimately care about, you feel compelled to do, you stop working, you start having fun. You and I both know that you cannot win over someone who is having fun on something that for you feels like work. When you have meaning from your work, you typically tap into things called autotelic 
activities. Autotelism means an end in itself. You do them because you like them, because it feels good, because it makes you happier, because it builds on your strengths. This is what some people will call their zone of genius, but it all hinges on the meaning that is associated with the task. You will never procrastinate on something you absolutely believe is the right thing for you in this moment in time. You will not procrastinate on your passion. You will not procrastinate on your purpose. So the higher your purpose, the lower procrastination until you absolutely remove it. Then mental performance is second part of this equation. So what is mental performance? Mental performance is, in essence, your ability to do what you said you were going to do. And this has to do with a, a skill called cognitive control. Cognitive control and cognitive reframing. What this does is that this changes the association with the emotion you're feeling. Every time you are able to change how an emotion feels to you and the meaning behind it, you can help yourself not being hijacked by that emotion. Cognitive control and cognitive reframing are the basis of two crucial performance skills, which is discipline and self-belief. These two are absolutely crucial, and they're based on cognitive control and cognitive reframing. The more disciplined you are, the better you become at not allowing yourself getting distracted by your own unmanaged emotional impulses. And the more you believe in your ability to solve, to solve things, the technical term for this is self-efficacy, the better you become at just doing the stuff because you understand that you are able to. You hold a self-image that allows you to do the things. So the second pillar here is mental performance. It's training your mental performance every single day so that you are in control of your cognitive responses. So you avoid the amygdala, the limbic system, from hijacking the prefrontal cortex. In other words, you manage to build your willpower so that it's bigger than the resistance that come from the task. Make sense? Cool. So this is spiritual performance and mental performance. If you're seeing any value from the video, like so your feed improves over time and you get more of these videos that we record to make you uh, an in performer and unstoppable beast. All right, so physical performance, that is, in essence, stress management. The ability to regulate your nervous system, which is, again, very much associated with your ability to stay calm, collected, and in control. So when you feel that emotion surging in, you can activate your parasympathetic nervous system, your rest and digest response to lower that activation and help your conscious mind better deal with that um, procrastination. So training your stress management will strengthen your overall health, of course, but also your ability to handle stresses, which is a way of helping the mind be more in control. Because if the Body is not healthy. If you are close to burnout, stress is super high. Cortisol, which is the stress hormone, is uh, all over your system. It is very hard to stay in a window of rationality and equanimity. So this, it is very important to master the physical performance side of your life. And then you have the executive performance. Executive performance is the ability to prioritize plan, prioritize, plan, and execute on the wildly important or the things that actually matter. So you don't waste time on stuff that doesn't need to be done. This is what allows you to avoid free procrastination. 
because you're very clear on what high performance means. You understand how to plan to avoid getting distracted. You know how to execute without getting doubtful. This is the last step. This is the fourth step in this holistic or systematic performance optimization. This is how we built over seven years the methodology. This is how you remove procrastination for good. If you are very purposefully connected with the task you want to do, like you absolutely believe it is the best thing you could be doing, it is the thing that maximizes your strength, you autotelically, so intrinsically motivated on doing the activities, you're typically not going to procrastinate on it. Unless you believe that there's a threat, a subconscious frame that is creating this negative association, which is why you need mental performance in order to reframe it reframe the meaning of that and also control your response and become disciplined and foster your self-belief and self-efficacy. And this will be enough if the, you know you are calm, collected, and in control. Your stress management is on point. And if it isn't, well, what do you do? Well, you train it. You train your physical performance so you can always stay collected and not overreact or excite yourself. And the only thing that can go wrong if you are autotechnically motivated on doing things that you have cognitive control over and you're chill is choosing the wrong task or planning the wrong way or executing without a plan, which is why executive performance is exactly what you end up needing, right? So this is how you remove procrastination for good. This is how I did it years ago, and this is how we teach our clients how to do it. Optimal, absolute performance optimization that tackles every single pillar of who you are as an entrepreneur. And as I said in the beginning, what this leads is that you get 33% of your time back. How much... It is worth to get a third of your life back. That is three hours on a typical nine-hour day. This is what the latest research tells us. Well, how would it feel if you worked 33% less for the same results? Or you were able to grow your business consistently by investing 33% more of your time on it? Or you could find the ideal balance between uh, working and having fun so that you are always looking forward to the life that you have designed. Well, all of these things right now have been robbed by you, from you, because your procrastination is most probably preventing you from doing it, right? So again, 33% is huge, and I would highly encourage you to apply this protocol to remove it. We have built a protocol for you, so download it and start implementing it, and see how fast you can claim your time back. You know, the goal is not to hustle. The goal is not to work all day, every day. The goal is to win, to win in business, to scale the life and the business we want, to become an elite performers that can achieve more in less time. And a core component of it is procrastination. If you want to go deep into how you master your mind, how to really get things done consistently, check this video here. It's going to go deeper in relevant aspects of how to get it done. See you in the next video.